Good morning and good evening, everyone, and good afternoon. I know people are calling from everywhere. Um, it is early morning for us. I live here in Omaha, Nebraska. Thank you so much for inviting me to this awesome conference, and I hope all of you have been uh, having a great time and learning. I know it's late evening right now, so you might be having your dinner while you're uh, listening to this, but I promise to make it engaging and to make it worth your time. Again, um, uh, I will just share my screen to confirm that everybody can see my slides. And I believe you can see everything from over here. So today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about accelerating the journey. Everybody knows with COVID and with everything that's been happening, a lot of organizations are thinking about how do I go faster? How do I mature? Um, how do I enable digital transformation? How do I upskill people quicker? So it's all now about scaling your transformation and accelerating your transformation. And I really wanna take your mindset away from just agile into the world of business agility. And what does it really mean to consider the bigger picture of business and enterprise agility? And what does it mean to accelerate that journey? So thank you again for the warm introduction. I think she's already done a great job giving you a background um, on my history. Um, I started this company about 11 years ago uh, because of my passion for transformation. Um, and so a lot of what we do is really focus on using measurement um, and using uh, the holistic enterprise business agility model as a way of accelerating the transformation. So I think what we should do is just start first with the conversation around what is business agility? I'm just gonna take this to full screen mode uh, so you can see it better. All right, that's better. Um, what is business agility? So our definition, and this is a, a joint definition with Evan Layborn, he is the founder of the Business Agility Institute. Think about business agility is your ability to adapt to change, learn and pivot, deliver at speed and thrive in a competitive market. So think about those words again and think about how real this has just been with COVID and with everything that's been happening. Think about how many companies, I don't care if they were big, if they were small, if they were medium, if they were slow, if they had agile, if they did not adopt agile yet, did they need to adapt to change? Yes, they did. Did they need to learn quickly and pivot? Oh yes, they had to. Did they have to deliver very quickly at speed? Yes, one of our large customers, Federal Reserve, said that they had to process 1.2 million PPP transactions. As you guys know, here in the United States, the federal government um, released the, the payment protection program, payroll protection program, which is to help small businesses. And they had to process these transactions within one week, where before they had like processed, like I think they said 30 the year before, but 1.2 million. So they had to deliver at speed and thrive in a competitive market because gone are the days where large companies can eat small. Today, fast companies eat slow and your ability to outlearn your competition is your only sustainable advantage. So we, we publish this awesome report every year with the Business Agility Institute, the Use Agility Healthcare Platform. And I welcome you to take this presentation, download it and share this with your executives team, which is what are the latest statistics and what are the benefits of adopting business agility, not just agile, you guys. I think we as an industry need to move away from just thinking about the methods and the tools. Those are all great. We need DevOps. We need SAFE. We need Agile. We need Scrum. We need Kanban. XP, yes. But at the end of the day, we need to enable the business to be successful, to be competitive, to deliver fast enough. So I just wanted to make sure we kind of looked at that. So now I'm gonna play kind of a short video for you that talks about what are some of the patterns and challenges that we see in organizations today and how can they think differently um, as they begin a business agility journey, right? So I'm gonna go over here. Hopefully you guys can, okay, it's right here. And let me open it bigger. I'm Sally Alana, founder of Agility Health. And here at Agility Health, we are very passionate about accelerating our customers' enterprise business agility journey by helping them measure what matters. As we've worked with many customers, we're starting to see some common challenges and common patterns and solutions. So what I wanted to do is just draw this picture for you. Let's call this demand and capacity. Let's look at it from this perspective. On the demand side, the first challenge you're going to hear from customers and enterprises is enterprise planning is painful. 
there is too much focus on work and output. So you'll see lots of initiatives, deliverables, epic stories, but not a lot of focus on outcomes. You'll also see that there's many competing business priorities that are coming in through silos and everybody feels like their priority is number one. Another challenge is there's no discovery or validation of the ideas and there's a lot of idea generators, multiple people with lots of great ideas. The problem that this causes is many of these ideas are actually duplicate. So you could have Joe and Adam and Jamie over here all asking for the same thing, uh, but in different ways. As you go down to the funnel, you're going to realize that teams are not designed to optimize the flow of value. Teams today are all organized based on who reports to who. And so in order for you to get anything done, there's a lot of bottlenecks. There's a lot of shared service teams that um, are really over capacity. And there's a lot of handoffs and dependencies between them. As you come closer to the actual teams that get the work done, what you're gonna see is they're overwhelmed. Teams are burning out. They will tell you they're buried in never ending backlogs. The good news is by using Agile, we've started to organize our work a little bit better. So we have backlogs and we have cadences and we plan well but it's still never ending. Teams have no time to be creative or to solve problems the right way. Like remember those three different features that we're all asking for the same thing. Nobody has time to focus on that. So this is a summary of some of the problems that we're seeing. And one of my quotes here that customers like is, if you want to flow, stop the flooding. So let's take a look at this picture in a different way. How can we redraw this? Again, let's look at demand, discovery, and then let's flow outcomes. So this funnel looks a little bit different in that at the beginning, I want to create portfolio teams. This is a missing gap that we have today. We built teams and we built teams of teams, but we have not yet structured portfolio management teams that could really organize the work at the very top of the funnel. Portfolio teams really should be planning based on outcomes. What are my three-year outcomes? What are my one-year outcomes? And what are my quarterly outcomes? Those one-year outcomes will map to your initiatives and your epics, and those quarterly outcomes will map to your deliverables or your features. Make sure that these outcomes as they come into this funnel are going through discovery. The purpose of discovery is to validate your ideas before you invest a lot in actually delivering them. Are these ideas valuable? Are they feasible? Are they usable? Another way to think about the value of discovery is can we test something? We call it test it, nail it before we scale it. Test it, nail it, scale it. Some cool techniques for doing discovery would be following the Mobius loop by doing discovery and then delivery, or even leveraging things like the five-day sprint, or just building some fun mock-ups and showing them to customers quickly and getting very rapid feedback so that you can begin to experiment before you actually build. Now let's come into the teams. How do I wanna organize and design my teams? I want to organize my teams so they can flow outcomes. So whether they're business teams or technology teams, whether they're product or engineering teams, and regardless of the reporting structure, we want to organize teams together in a virtual way so they can enable the flow of outcomes. To support the system that is designed to flow outcomes at the very top, we need leadership agility. We need to shift from the very directive style that we have today um, into more of enabling autonomy and delegating decisions down. We need to also invest in developing talent because through this journey, you're going to see there's a lot of new roles that are going to be created and a lot of roles that are today going to shift, including the role of leaders. So developing talent and investing in growing our skills is another critical enabler. And when you enable the flow of outcomes across your enterprise, you will arrive at true business agility where you are disrupting before you are disrupted. You become a learning organization and you can thrive in a competitive market. Thank you for watching.
All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, that's also available on our website and there's a link from it over here. But my objective, um, did I turn on my video again? I think I am back. Yes, I am. Okay. So the, the main objective here that I really wanted to share with you is this is a journey. Um, and the journey really goes through a lot of different phases or um, let me just call them gears. I don't want to use the word phase because it doesn't have to be sequential. So let's explore this journey. When organizations are thinking about adopting um, business agility or even transforming themselves, let's even forget about the words here. The first thing that they consider and think about is team agility, um, which is usually I want to bring in Scrum, I want to bring in Kanban, I want to create cross-functional teams, I want to make them stable. Um, I want to make sure those teams have the right agile tools, Jira, Rally, version one. I want to make sure they learn you know, practices for technical agility. That's called team agility, right? That's kind of the foundation of making sure that teams can operate. And so what we recommend that you do and what Agility Health does is help you measure the health of those teams. Remember, I didn't, I didn't even just say agile maturity. It's, are they healthy? Are those teams healthy? Whether they're business teams or technology teams, are they performing? Um, I'll enable self-learning for those teams because with um, this transformation, you're not going to have enough coaches to go sit with every single team and help them. So you have to really create a model for acceleration where teams can help themselves grow and actually focus on talent development. For many years, our focus has been on agile adoption or safe adoption or DevOps adoption. I think now we really need to shift into growing the individuals and the talent and the skill set that's within the team. The focus then begins to shift one layer above the team, which is what we call team of team agility. And team of team agility is how do I get 10, 20, 30, 40 teams to work together well? Well, that's where scaling comes in. And obviously the most popular method is um, scaled, agile, and safe. And there's other methods out there. But how do I plan at scale? How do I have five to eight to 10 teams, you know, operate and deliver on a common PI schedule? Um, how do I plan together, execute, manage dependencies, or as we say, eliminate dependencies? DevOps really becomes important over here because DevOps is all about making sure that there is a continuously delivered pipeline with full automation and that multiple teams can, can actually deliver together. And we also have over here leadership and culture because the role of the manager is really disrupted in Agile. And you begin to think differently about what two managers do today. If you don't want them to micromanage anymore, you don't want them telling people what to do every day, then what is the new role of managers? And, and the new role of managers, honestly, is to be more strategic. And it is to shift up a little bit and begin to listen through these measurements and through our platform, look at what are the organizational obstacles that the teams are saying that they have and completely focus on that continuous improvement, removing obstacles, developing talent and strengthening communities of practice. Um, day to day management of the work and tasking and firefighting and shifting people around is no longer a primary role for managers. Um, when we think about organizational agility, which is sort of even the layer above the team of team layer, this is where you think about lean portfolio and lean product management. Um, if you guys are familiar with portfolio management and lean portfolio management is us shifting away from constantly planning based on output and beginning to think about outcomes and OKRs and breaking the work down into, yes, I have yearly objectives and initiatives, but I need to have yearly outcomes and I need to have quarterly outcomes and the work needs to align to that. And I need to have really visibility um, at every PI or at every quarter of what outcomes have we delivered as a team. And we'll talk about that more in a little bit here. Value stream structure of product management. If you remember in this video that I just showed you, we talked about discover before you deliver. And so a lot of that product discovery, um, design thinking, uh, making sure you have a roadmap, you have actually a product uh, mentality, not a project mentality. All of that is there too. And value stream structure is organizing our team so they can flow outcomes instead of just the who reports to who. F fine, keep that, keep the, the physical structure, but move teams together and make them work together, business teams or technology teams to deliver outcomes. And of course, the biggest movement right now is around digital maturity and digital transformation as well. For operational agility, this is really where the rest of the business comes in here, you guys. I mean, this is where we need to make sure that customers have a seat at the table, HR, finance, sales, marketing, audit. This is not a technology only transformation. Business agility is only achieved when the rest of the organization, legal procurement, all of them are leaning out their processes. And again, when I say that, people think business agility is 
HR team using agile methods. We're not talking about that. We're talking about leaning out and becoming efficient and thinking about modern ways of executing. If you research agile marketing, you're going to realize it's not just about Scrum and Kanban and all those things. They really have new ways of working as marketing teams, new ways of working as sales teams, new ways of budgeting in the finance world. Um, and our ultimate goal is really to enable enterprise business agility, which is anticipating your customer's need, disrupting before being disrupted, and having continuous improvement just be part of your DNA. So um, we believe strongly in uh, you know, watching and learning, which is why we created agilevideos.com, because people need to learn. They need to start somewhere. And people are afraid of this journey. It looks complicated. There's too much stuff going on. But you want to kind of make it safe first by people learning. And um, when you are learning, you know, unfortunately, two day and three day in person workshops have really been disrupted recently. And so we really think these short kind of little short videos are a really simple way or 90 minute webinars or kind of like what you're doing right now, small bites of information are really helpful. And then you want to measure where are we today? Where do we want to go? And we want to do that continuously. We want to do that every quarter, every PI, and sometimes even more frequently. And then you want to really invest in growth. And that is really the way to accelerate the journey. So invest in learning, invest in measurement, invest in growth as a way of accelerating your journey. Um, we here at Agility Health wanted to share with you, what do you measure? Like, what do you measure at every level? So when a company comes to us and says, I wanna get a baseline, I wanna figure out where we are today. If we didn't do anything else, we would start with those two radars that you see over here. At the team level, how healthy are your teams? That's bottom up. You gotta know who your teams are and are they healthy? Are they operating? Are they delivering? Um, where are they in what we call crawl, walk, run, fly method, right? Um, so, and then at the top level, which would be enterprise business agility. So those seven areas of investment, whether it's product management, lean portfolio management, organizational structure, agile, leadership and culture, uh, making it stick, technology agility. These are the seven pillars of enterprise business agility. And so we measure how well have you um, actually improved and matured across those seven. So if we only had to start with two, those would be the two that I would recommend. And I think we're gonna do an interesting exercise right now. If we could launch the first poll, um, and, and Kriti, if you don't mind launching the first poll to the audience, which is, how mature are you from an agile perspective? So think about your team health, actually, your team maturity. Are you crawl, walk, run, or fly? Um, so go ahead and launch that. And if you can give me feedback because I don't see the live version, um, we'll give them about 30 seconds to answer that. Okay, first poll has been launched. Um, Kriti, are you starting to see, if you don't mind communicating with me, are you starting to see some answers coming in? I'm assuming there are some answers. I can't hear you, Kriti. Can you guys hear her? I can't hear you. So I'm assuming that that poll launched successfully and there were some answers. Maybe you can send me in the chat, um, but that's basically the agile maturity of how well are we doing from an agile perspective, crawl, walk, run, fly. Um, the next one that we're gonna launch is across the enterprise business agility, across the that whole journey that I showed you, team agility, team of team agility. Um, organizational agility and finally enterprise business agility, how would you rate your maturity there? So um, Kriti, if you don't mind launching that second poll now, so we can, and then take a picture of the first poll because I want to see how people respond. And I can't hear you, unfortunately. I'm sorry, can you hear me now, Sally? Yes, I can hear you now, yes. Okay, so for the first poll, uh, let me tell you, uh, about 50% people say that they walk, 22% uh, are at crawl, 31% are at run, and no one is at fly. No one is at fly, that's very no. good. 50, 50 <laughs> at walk, how many at crawl again? 24%. Um, okay, so you guys, this is really good. So think about that. 24% are crawling, which means that we're getting started on the journey, 
but at least most of the other numbers, 50 and 31%, which is 80% of us, are either in the walk or in the run state in terms of investing in agile and basic agile maturity. Now, let's run this with the EBA, with the enterprise business agility, and let's launch that and begin to see the results there. And how many respondents do we have? Um, I can't see the number of responses, but I can tell you the results for the second poll. So about 50% are at walk delivering and 13% are at crawl. 36% are at uh, run and uh, again, no one at fly. Okay. All right. Got it. So did you say 13 at crawl? One, three. Yes. Okay. Great, so there's 13% of us that are crawling. Um, this is really good numbers, it's actually very similar. So 56% at our walk, and what that probably means, and that's a big number, it means half of us, if not 60%, are on that journey. We're investing in DevOps, we're investing in product management, we've brought in outcome-based planning, but we're still not proficient. We're still not in the optimizing stage of that. So that's really, really great. And those are the two, like if you only had to start you know, figuring out my team agility and figuring out my enterprise business agility, top down, bottom up, that's where I would start. But I'm showing you over here all of the other radars because I might want to focus on talent development and I might want to go deep and optimize the role of scrum masters, product owners, agile managers and leaders, agile coaches. I might want to grow more internal coaches or RTEs. Um, at the team of team level, I might want to improve product management. I might want to really assess my DevOps or DevSecOps across all of my team of team layer. I might want to use some of our new scaled agile and safe radars that we have. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can't, digital transformations are newest assessment, newest radar, and that would be at the enterprise level, at the portfolio level. How well are we adopting digital technologies, right? Whether it's RPA or, or AI or machine learning, how well have we actually invested in some of that um, and just thought about digital transformation holistically. So there's a lot of things to measure, but hopefully you kind of understand where to start with. Um, and there's also, I wanna share kind of three different metrics to look at, maturity, performance, and outcomes. Maturity is qualitative, it's behaviors and practices. And that's a lot of what the questions that we have in the radar, which is the crawl, walk, run, fly. How are we doing in terms of our practices and our behaviors? Performance is a lot of what everybody's in love with because our ALM platforms, Jira Rally version one, Azure DevOps, all of those are giving us performance metrics. How many times have you delivered? Frequency of releases, MTTR, mean time to recover. Um, what's my quality and defect ratio? Um, all those things, um, how much, how many times has the built field? Those are all performance metrics. Outcomes are OKRs and outcomes are OKRs. Um, objectives and key results. I'm actually gonna share with you my screen here because I wanted you to see the difference between those two things just because um, everybody always says sometimes those things are very, it's hard to understand them, but this is what an outcome and OKR looks like. So this is one of our dashboards where we're just looking at outcomes and OKR. And you really want to think about three-year outcomes. So what is it that we're trying to do three years or two years from now? How do I break that down into one-year outcome? How do I break one-year outcome into quarterly outcomes? And then how do I align my teams, my portfolios, my programs, to those quarterly outcomes and the one-year outcomes. And an OKR, the simplest way of thinking about an OKR is really what is the objective? So ensuring seamless customer experience so that we can exceed customer expectations, that's called an objective. What is the hypothesis statement? So think about lean startup. We always say that everything is a hypothesis. You don't know if you're really gonna achieve this outcome. So you're just assuming. And so what is your hypothesis? And so we always start the hypothesis statement with, we believe that by doing X, Y, Z for X, Y, Z persona, we will achieve ABC. Um, and then we say measured by, and then here are business outcome related metrics that we can track against. So um, yes, we wanna look at um, performance and maturity, which is very important, but we also wanna look at outcomes. Um, and so I just wanted to share this with you over here. Um, and give me a second, I just wanna refresh over here and also help you see the other ones on the other side as well. All right, let me resume sharing. So this was the outcome dashboard um, and the main objective from the outcomes dashboard is to answer that kind of that third metric. But if I click over here and go to insights, 
um, what I want to look at is maturity and performance. So again, at any level of the organization, whatever portfolio, whatever program, whatever product line, I want to see what's my overall agility. And agility for us is the combination of qualitative and, and quantitative metrics. Qualitative metrics, which is maturity, it's all about culture, leadership foundation, clarity, you know, how are my teams doing and are they getting better over time or not? And then performance are what we call quantitative metrics. So that is like your deployment frequency, your time, your lead time to change, your feature throughput, your cycle time. All of this data means nothing if you're not going to take action, if you're not going to do something about it. So one of my friends and, and, and colleagues and really respected in the industry, his name is um, um, uh, and of course, I just forgot his name right now, Larry Macheron and Troy McGinnis, both of them have taught me something awesome, which is when you're building a dashboard, you want it to answer the questions of what is the data telling me? So what? Is it good or is it bad? Now what? Now what do I do? Which is why we also have here the organizational growth items. What is it that we can do to improve? What are what did the teams ask for? What are the areas that, of improvement? Um, and this is basically how you accelerate. You want to make sure that your teams are growing, your managers and your coaches have a backlog of improvement, and your executives also have a backlog of improvement. So I hope kind of showing you the data helped bring this together because people love this concept, but they don't know in reality what does this really actually look like. Um, and I just wanted to show it to you. Maturity, performance, outcomes being measured at every level of the organization. And the most important part is, so now what are we going to do? So the, the now what? What are we going to do to actually improve at each level? Um, one thing I want to mention here is that measurement should always be used to enable growth and it should never be used for punishment or reward. So this message over here is critical. The moment that you use metrics as a stick, to punish or reward the teams, you will never see the truth again. Mark my word for it. Um, I'm an expert in measurement and this is what we do for a living. So every data can be gained, any data can be gained. And the quality of data that we have in Agility Health, I would say it's a testament to making the team safe, making sure that they can actually do these exercises of assessing themselves and growing without any repercussions. If you immediately fire the team that has the lowest scores, well then all teams will show you high scores, whether it's any of those things. So please make sure that everything that we're talking about is not used to punish or reward, or even to give a promotion to the management. So even the managers don't promote them or give them a bonus or fire a manager if their teams, because the moment that you do that, then they will become even more command and control and have specific targets and make sure that the team achieve these targets. So um, just be very careful on how you use metrics. Um, if any of you are passionate about lean, and you guys know, obviously, agile, really, I can, I always say like agile and lean got married. Um, they really kind of complement each other. Lean has something called Demaic. Um, and Demaic is really awesome because I feel like that's exactly what we do here at Agility Help, which is define what does good look like? What does crawl, walk, run, fly look like um, in any of these areas, whether it's team health or DevOps or digital or Scrum Master, those radars that you see is just our way of visualizing with you, what does good look like? Measure, which is get a baseline. Where are we at today? How are we doing today, right? Um, and we should get the baseline across all of the three metrics. Roll up the data and analyze. So now I wanna roll up across five, six, seven, ten 10 teams or I wanna roll up across hundreds of teams and see what are the patterns? What are we starting to see that's common across all of them? And then build an improvement plan, build an improvement plan for the teams and for the organizations on where is it that they can improve. So this is the team health radar. This is the most popular one. Um, and what is it that we measure at the team level? Clarity. Does this team have clarity on their vision and purpose, their plans and their role? Performance, um, first of all, do they have confidence and do we as the product owner as stakeholders have confidence in this team performing, but also have they shown me predictability, time to market, value, quality, responsiveness to change? Are they actually performing? Leadership, how is the scrum master? How's the tech lead? How's the product owner doing? And how are the managers doing to support this team? Culture, are those teams happy? Do they trust and respect each other? Are they allowed to be creative and innovative? Um, do they collaborate well? 
foundation is all of the foundation of agility. Are they structured correctly? Is it the right size and skill? Do they have the basic agile practices in place, the right ceremonies? This is what we um, cover when we're saying measure the health of a team. Um, and one of the things, the approach that we take is facilitated retrospective. We call them measure and grow retrospective. Um, we created this, honestly, you know, I don't know, maybe like six years ago, five years ago now. Um, and it's honestly becoming a standard right now. Even Scaled Agile has adopted this concept of facilitated retrospectives for their measurement and grow release um, recently, which is that you don't just send a survey to people, right? That's kind of old school. Old school is we send everybody hundreds of surveys and then we, we the top people, collect the data, analyze it, and then tell them what they should do to improve. Um, really the most modern way of continuous improvement is that you engage the team itself. You, um, yes, you launch the, 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 the assessment, but the team members are answering the questions. They're really learning, learning from it. Crawl, walk, run, fly. They are seeing the results in real time. They're reviewing and analyzing and having real open, honest conversations about how they're doing. And then they themselves are building the growth plan. And instead of this taking two weeks, <laughs> you know, to do this whole thing, we now basically put it into a three hour um, or half day session once a quarter. So once every PI, if you are using Scaled Agile, then we recommend that you do this during the Inspect and the Adapt, the IMA, and Scaled Agile does as well. If you're not using SAFE and using any other method, then I'm sure you're at least planning quarterly, then it would be at the end of every quarter to pause and do these retrospectives. In between, we have something called the pulse check. And so pulsing is only sending three to five questions that are important during each retrospective. So I'm assuming that all of you following Agile have two week retrospectives and that's where you can do more of the pulse check. The other thing that I wanna share with you here is the growth portal. And the growth portal is important because part of when the team assesses themselves, remember how we talked about, we really wanna make sure that when teams assess themselves, they can improve, they themselves can improve. So you need to make sure like, let's say one of these areas was stability and allocation and the team does not feel good about how they're doing from a stability perspective. The growth portal gives you the ability to think about what does healthy look like? What does unhealthy look like? Give the team real recommendations. So what do you recommend that they do for the next quarter to improve? What are some videos that they can watch related to that? What are some articles? What are some training? And so again, this is a mock-up over here, but who are the internal coaches and who are the internal mentors that can actually help them? So instead of these massive wikis where people don't even know where to start, what I'm suggesting here is that you tie knowledge, you tie recommendations, you tie the coaching and the mentors to the specific competency itself so that when the team looks at the results of that radar they understand um, where is it that they're they're needing support they click on the growth portal that is where they find support and that is what we mean by teams are able to help themselves grow um, we've already talked about this which is rolling up the data as you can see over here in this roll-up view you know we've got a problem on the product owner side we need to probably invest in training and development i would actually say you have a big problem here if this was your program on the cultural side, right? Culture here looks like it's really struggling. So maybe there is something that we could lean in to help from a cultural perspective. Um, planning, um, and there's a lot of correlation, by the way. One of the things that we've learned is there's actually, a, not a, I don't wanna call it causation, but it's correlation, which is that we found that low scores in leadership, such as the product owner, actually impact clarity. Um, another thing that we found is predictability is impacted by, allocation and stability. If teams are not stable, they're not gonna be predictable, but also by planning and estimating. If you don't plan consistently, you're not gonna be predictable. Quality is impacted by or correlated with sustainable pace. So again, if I don't have sustainable pace and people are burning out, so there's also relationships in this radar um, that when you get certified and you learn, you can learn more about it. Um, so kind of one of my final messages here before I just, I'm going to share with you a quick story and then I think we're, and how many minutes do we have before we need to take questions, Kriti? I think we have about 10, is that right? Uh, yeah, you have about 10 minutes, Sally. So, I mean, the, the session ends within 45 minutes and if you don't have enough time within the session, then uh, you can take the questions in the networking lounge also. That's also.
Okay, and I can, I'm, I'll, I'll jump over to the networking lounge to answer any more questions. I do want to give you the case study because I think the case study is important, but it's good to know that I've got 10 minutes. So um, continuous improvement, uh, in order for this to really work, you want the teams to be doing these, you know, measure and grow, investing in measure and grow retrospectives that are facilitated, identify growth items help themselves improve, but they, you, you want them to identify any organizational obstacles that their managers can help them with. And then the managers and the coaches, which is at the team of team level, they also invest in measure and grow. They work on the organizational growth items, but they identify any enterprise growth items that are beyond their control. And then at the enterprise level, your senior leaders and executives they are committed to removing enterprise obstacles. And of course, then they got to go to the big boss to solve anything that they cannot manage. So this is what we say, you know, if you want to align teams and achieve outcomes, you need to listen to their voice and remove obstacles. It's a two way street. I want my teams to deliver outcomes. I need to hear what is their obstacles and remove those. So it's really beautiful. Um, so I'm gonna end with this case study. One of our large banks here in the United States, they've been doing Scaled Agile for about three years. They have 90 teams. Um, they don't really use a platform or anything like that. They just, uh, they've been doing a lot of their measurement through their inspect and adapt PowerPoints, Excels, just survey monkeys. And one of the things that they said is that they just don't feel like they have visibility into the common patterns across the team. The data is really hard to roll up. It's hard to tell the story. Are they actually improving over time or not? And, and the big boss, the, the, the leader, the CIOs have said, look, you can't hire any more people. You have to get your work done with the current capacity. You can't increase and, and add more teams. Um, and so what they did is they really ran assessments across 90 different teams. They rolled up the data. They were able to start seeing some of the patterns of of areas from a measurement perspective, like predictability, time to market value delivery. Um, they felt like they didn't have a lot of great, you know, um, visibility on their plans and their roadmaps. They also felt like the product owners were not really in getting the backlog ready. There was a lot of churn, there was a lot of change in the requirements. And these were some of the words that they used directly. Um, there's no roadmap. Uh, we, we feel orphaned. Uh, we have a lot of throwaway, throwaway work because um, everything's changing so frequently. Please stop, stop changing the intent after every sprint. Um, how can we plan ahead? Like, can you please give us one to three sprints worth of stories ready? A lot of it started to point towards the same problems. And so what they did is they realized, okay, look, these are the five areas where we're the lowest and we're going to have to do something about them. Monthly release planning, vision and purpose, quarterly road mapping, predictable delivery and impediment management. Those were areas that from the data, they can see that these are the areas of improvement. Um, they identified 900 growth items, 386 of them were not at the team level, they were for the management level. Um, and I'm very proud of this team because they did a lot of great qualitative and quantitative analysis. They looked to see what was the correlation. They realized that the lack of, you know, the lower scores on backlog management and leadership, you know, related to the predictable and time to market problems that they were having. But why I'm proud of them is I took a screenshot from their, um, their growth uh, insights dashboard and look at how many growth items they completed at the team level in those categories. So these are filtered by done. At the organizational level, which is their management, they actually completed 391. Um, and then at the enterprise level, they completed 39 different growth items. What that did for them over this um, six month period is it helped them improve overall their performance by 21 or 22%. And again, performance is quantitative metrics. Uh, maturity is qualitative. And so overall, their overall agility improved. But the most important thing that they said in terms of what's happened to the culture is that they are much more predictable. They said that they're not churning as much. They're not just waiting and waiting and changing. They felt like the teams finally understand the value of the work that they're delivering and that they understand what are the outcomes and how is my work aligned to the strategy. And the big number here was that the epics or the features that they delivered within 30 days increased by 267%. So they really measured obviously the baseline and they measured the improvement. Um, they were also, the leaders were really happy because those same teams were able to do deliver the same amount of work of five additional teams had they added them, but they didn't have to add five additional teams. So their overall throughput had improved. 
So um, I hope you enjoyed this session. Uh, I know it's late probably over there, but I hope that you see measurement and metric in a different way. You can see it as a way of accelerating your continuous improvement journey. I have three different things here for you to do. If you are new to business agility or to this whole journey, we have a whole new course now called business agility on agilevideos.com. Feel free to register. Um, you can use the transform 14 promo code and you'll have 14 day free access. If you guys are interested in leveraging the library for your company, please reach out to us. If you want to get certified, if you really like what you're hearing and you want to become a certified facilitator, please check out our schedule. All of our courses um, for facilitation now are on demand, on demand, meaning that you can do it whenever you want to at night, in the morning. You can come to the, the virtual ones that we have, the live ones, but they're all e-learning. So you can actually get certified on your own um, uh, just through the website itself. And then you can book an Agil Agility Health demo. That's all for me. Um, thank you so much. I really hope that you enjoyed this. Uh